Okay, time for another episode of Survival Stuff with Indiana Jim. I'm James C. Jones. Uh, I write my books under the name of James C. Jones, but for the for our little uh, programs here on YouTube and other uh, things that we're going to put it on and our website at americansurvivor.org, uh, it's going to be Indiana Jim. It's Indiana Jim because Indiana Jones was taken, okay? But I'm Jim Jones from Indiana. Um, so anyhow, I'm the founder of Live for USA. I'm the author of Advanced Survival, Total Survival, 150 Survival Secrets, uh, Ultimate Survival, the Ultimate Survival Book of, uh, of Survival Gear, and coming up in 2022, the Prepper's First Aid Handbook or Prepper's First Aid uh, Manual, uh, which is going to come out in early 2022. Uh, I'm an EMT, Certified Hazard Control Manager, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that I've done over the years to to learn and study survival and preparedness and emergency skills uh, that we need. Uh, I founded Live Free USA, was officially founded in 1968, but it was around before that. Uh, it's a nonprofit tax deductible corporation. Uh, the website is at americansurvivor.org. Um, our mission is to advocate and educate for individual and family and emergency preparedness and self-reliance. Uh, we believe that self-reliant families are the foundation of a free society, free and secure society. Uh, membership online is $20 or $30 for three years. And if you join online at the website, you can actually download something over 70 issues of American Survivor, which American Survivor is actually uh, the, our newsletter. And you can download this and put it off. Oh, we'll, if you want to give us your address, we'll actually snail mail this to you. Uh, it comes out every two months. Uh, it's the oldest surviving, we're good at survival, uh, the oldest surviving preparedness and survival publication in the United States. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll be joining us. We're forming chapters. Uh, we're trying to build a new uh, survival center, a training center, and we're raising funds for that. So anyhow, in this episode, in this survival stuff, we're going to talk about survival stuff that goes on in your head. And in many of my books, including my book, Total Survival, and also um, 150 Survival Secrets, um, I go into more detail about the, the, of my 10 principles of survival. So we're going to talk about the first five today. Uh, it, to make these short and, and, and get them on the internet, um, we decided to make the first five, and then we have another program that's already out there for the second five principles of survival. These principles are really important. Um, they apply to everything. Basically, I, I, I apply them in, in this book. Uh, I actually applied them to, to first aid and, and self-defense. I apply them more in more detail in the, in the first aid book uh, that, that's coming out next year. Um, they're also the principles for life. So if you listen to these and we're going along, you're going to hear the first five, and then we're going to go to, go to the other video and you'll see the second five of these ten principles. You think about them, they apply to your life in general. They apply to emergencies in the outdoors. You're, you're lost in the woods, you get caught in a blizzard, you know, anything like that. Uh, the pandemic. Uh, decline economy, those what we call chronic disasters that are happening to us all the time and are going to continue to happen to us. These principles apply to everything. So what are the 10 principles? Well, the first one is anticipate, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, second one is be aware. The third one is be there now. In other words, be in the moment. Um, stay calm and evaluate. We're going to talk about those in more detail. Um, I'll just give you the, the last five quick and you'll you'll get to see those in the other video. Uh, the last five are six. Do the next right thing. In other words, don't do the wrong thing. Take control. Have what you need. Use what you have and do what is necessary. So those are the those are the last five. So we'll, we'll cover those in another video. But today we're going to talk about the first five principles of survival that apply to everything. And the first one is anticipate. You have to anticipate that bad things are going to happen to you or that, you know, I'm going down the road, driving down the road, and I'm looking at that, uh, that truck with the steel uh, rolls on it. And I'm yeah, anticipating a little bit that maybe those chains aren't going to hold. Um, 
I anticipated the COVID-19 epidemic or some kind of pandemic I was, years and years ago. I, every year in the newsletter, we put the threat matrix for the coming years. And the threat matrix, the top of the threat matrix uh, two years ago was a pandemic, okay? Everybody knew it, the scientists knew it, the mathematics were there. It was a definite, it was not a matter of if, but when. Uh, so we anticipated it. I anticipated it at least. Uh, so we assume the first thing in being a good survivor is assuming that some bad things can happen and that some of them can happen to you. Constantly do what if analysis. You know, what if there's a pandemic? What if I lose my job? What if the chains on that thing break? What if those three guys down the road, I used to live on the south side of Chicago, <clears throat> So one of those three guys down the road are gangbangers and they're going to try to uh, uh, carjack me or if I'm walking, they're going to try to uh, rough me up or whatever. <clears throat> so I have to, what if, what am I going to do? I have a little plan already. I had a plan for the pandemic. Uh, I didn't have to be defiant. I didn't have to be compliant. <clears throat> Defiance and compliance have nothing to do with self-reliance, okay? A lot of people are acting out of one of those other two things. I had a plan. When I first saw that things were going bad in China and I'm looking at it, I said, you know, I got to get get my N95s out. I got to stock up on some things, uh, be ready. My wife and I were wearing N95s before 2020, back in, you know, December of 2019, uh, because I anticipated what was coming. If you don't do that, then then you, you won't get from denial, which was, a lot of people were still in denial, to action, which you have to go through the phases. Um, so you constantly do what if analysis. This, I, I was a safety manager for a big company. We used to sit down at a table and do what if analysis all day long. You know, what if that valve sticks? What if the guy who knows how to shut that down isn't here today? Okay, what if, what am I gonna do about that? If it happens, I will do this. If this happens, I will do this. Yeah, and you have a plan. Uh, if I'm sitting in a restaurant, Oh, okay, what if, and what if, okay, what if, if I'm sitting in the restaurant and that guy comes in and he's got a big long coat on and it's a warm day, what if he's got a gun under that coat or a shotgun and he's going to hold this place up, what am I going to do? I have that in my plan, probably won't happen, but I can go, boom, I can just execute the plan. I don't have to think, oh my God, going to denial, freeze up, okay. Um, those who move quickly from denial to action are the ones that survive. Analyze trends and signs. Again, we, we see the trends in the economy. We see the political trends, uh, the violence, the political dis, disorder, all the kinds of things. Those trends should tell us something. The economic trends, the breakdown of the economy. Uh, he who hesitates is often dead. Okay. Uh, consider having a mental alert so, sorry, uh, system. For instance, you know, if I'm sitting here right now, I'm in condition white. I'm home. I'm safe. Fairly safe anyhow. If I'm out on the street, I'm definitely in condition yellow. I'm a little more alert. Things start to get bad. I might go to condition orange or what. You can have it any way you want. Uh, I had a trigger. Emergency plans have triggers. I had triggers for my pandemic plan, and I have triggers for each plan. What if this happens? Then I start. I need to start uh, implementing my plan. The next second rule of survival, the principle of survival, is be aware. You need to be aware, okay? The military calls this situation awareness, or UDA, observe, orient, decide, and act. Uh, develop habits of analyzing events around you, sort of overlaps with, with uh, awareness. Um, be aware of things going on around you, sort out relevant and useful, accurate information from the crap that's on websites, from the crap that's on Facebook, okay? You've got to sort those out. Uh, don't take any one piece of information and say, oh yeah, that guy told me that this was happening or I need to do this. Go and find some other information, see if you can verify it. Uh, remember Reagan, you don't trust but verify? Tell you have to, what you have to do. Truth alone will make you free or safe. That's true. You don't know the truth won't help at all. And accurate information that's used to improve your life and freedom and security and your future, that will help you stay free, okay? Uh, listen to your instincts. We have these things, you know, this hairs on the back of our neck stand up a little bit and we're like, something's hinky, if you if you like that word, hinky. There's something hinky going on, something strange going on here. Don't feel right about this guy or I don't feel right about this situation or the environment. 
Those instincts have, br have been bred into us for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. That's why we're survived and our some of our ancestors didn't survive, okay? So we've got those instincts. You need to listen and pay attention to them, okay? So be aware. Second one, uh, be here now. That's the third principle of survival. Many disasters and personal accidents result from simply not paying attention. And I was a safety manager. I can't tell you how many times people got hurt and it turned out that they just weren't focused. They weren't paying attention. You must be mentally in the same place you are physically. You can't be with the smartphone in front of your nose or laptop or whatever. You can't be somewhere else. Unless you're like here, I'm in my house. Okay, I can be somewhere else. I can watch a movie or, you know, read a book or whatever. I'm, I'm somewhere else, kind of. But I'm here. But if I'm on the street, if I'm in my vehicle, uh, I, you know, I can't be in my vehicle. I have thousands and thousands of vehicles are all the way tons and they're traveling at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. I can't be somewhere else. Uh, driving is a full-time job. You can't be doing anything else, okay? Walking down the street in most cities is a full-time job just to survive walking down the street for four or five blocks. Did I mention I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago? Um, so anyhow, point is, you got to be here now. If you're in the woods, okay, you can't be, and you're lost in the woods and you get lost, you can't be somewhere else. You can't daydream. You can't wish for some other better condition or whatever. You've got to pay attention to your environment, the animals. Uh, you know, was there a snake under that rock that you're just about to step over? Um, it was the weather getting bad? Does it look like it's going to storm? Uh, under high stress situations, the tendency is to go to, to, to denial and wishing that things will get better or daydreaming or hoping. Gee, I hope. You know, I'm sure everything will be all right. We heard that with the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, I'm sure everything will be fine. Some of the politicians told us it'll go away. Basically, the best thing to do is if your mind is like, oh, everything is going to be fine. That's usually just the opposite, okay? At least in my personal experience, okay? I've been through a lot of, of, of interesting situations. Um, Generally, it's better to believe the worst, like they say, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. There's nothing wrong with hoping for the best. But you got to be prepared mentally for the worst. Focus on being here and now and in this situation, not somewhere else. Um, the fourth principle of survival is, is, and it's easier said than done, is stay calm. You've got to keep your cool. You've got to stay calm. Now, if you just followed, you know, anticipated that it was going to happen, you are aware of your surroundings. You are in the moment and you're at that place. It's going to make it a lot easier to stay calm. I knew this was going to happen. I thought this might happen. Okay, that guy just whipped the gun out from underneath that long jacket or a steel roll just started to come off that truck. But you know what? I had a little bit of an anticipation instead of freaking out because you have to go through all these mental processes of, of accepting that it's happening and being aware of what's happening and gathering. No, it's all done. You already did that. So all you got to do now is do what you need to do. So if you anticipate it and you plan and you even, you know, in, just in your mind, uh, your body will, of course, initiate the flight or fight mentality, uh, reactions, and you'll get adrenaline and all that kind of stuff. But you'll be able to manage it, especially if you follow those first three. You have to underst initially understand what's going to happen in your body and not panic and screw up. If you get through the first few minutes, you can gather your thoughts, okay? And then, and then you, can, you can go to the final steps of this, the, the final steps of the six steps. You can go through five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can go through those steps and they'll get you through. But these first ones particularly, anticipate, be aware, uh, be here now and stay calm. Those are the ones that get you in a position to survive. Now the fifth one of our first five, and like I say, we'll go the other other five in another, in another episode, uh, is evaluate. You've got to start evaluating your situation. Now, you've already anticipated it, and maybe you've already evaluated some things. Um, defense versus offense. You know, do I, do I de you know, I'm getting attacked. Do I defend or should I attack? Uh, I know in this book I talked about that usually the bad guys don't expect you to immediately attack them. The second they show up, they're depending on you to go along 
to you. They don't depend on you having anticipated and being aware and being there now. They anticipate you freezing and being in denial for a couple of minutes. Um, so defense versus offense. You know, am I going to defend myself? If I act really quickly and I go on the offense, lots of times the bad guys are just freaked out and they, they move on. Okay? Uh, if there's a fire, okay, defense versus offense. If you got fire extinguishers and you position them properly uh, as a fire, <coughs> you, you look at the fire and say, yes, I think I can just put this fire out. I'll call the fire department first, but then I can use my fire extinguisher because all, all your stuff burns down, burns out. You're in a bad survival situation right there. I, I talk about people who they've got a lot of guns but no fire extinguishers. You're a lot more likely to lose all your stuff from a fire than you are from a, an attack or an assault. So anyhow, am I going to go on the offense? Have I learned how to use a fire extinguisher? All kinds of situations. Am I going to, if I lose my job, am I going to go offense or defense? In other words, am I going to try to protect my job and just hang in there and live off my survival food? Or am I going to go on the offense and learn a new skill or expand my capabilities? Okay, that's offense. Okay, you can't panic at every si every sign. Now, there was a lot of what we call near-miss incidents with the epidemic. There was the swine flu, bird flu, SARS, all that kind of stuff going on. Those are what we call near-miss incidents. Should have warned you that something eventually was going to happen when I was in safety. We always jump on near misses. Like, I almost got my hand caught in the machine. Okay, oh, I'm glad that didn't happen. No, 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 no. Ooh, we're going to keep make sure your hand never gets caught in that machine. Uh, same thing with you. I almost had a fire in my house. You know, almost something out. Well, why did this happen? I got to eliminate the possibility that that'll ever turn into a serious situation. I almost got assaulted on the street. I almost had a car accident because I drank a couple too many, too many drinks. Whatever it is, you or almost lost my job and I don't have any, any other skills. That's up to you to make sure that that near-miss incident turns into an opportunity to prevent or even get better at survival. So, but you can't wait too long either. So you can't ignore, you know, signs that the bad things are coming. By the way, there's, it's just as likely to have another pandemic next year or the year after as there was two years ago. I mean, the, the fact that we had a pandemic mathematically doesn't make another one any less likely. In fact, it makes it more likely because, uh, one point, we use up all the resources. Secondly, it, it, the fact that we had one only proved that we can have a worse one. The, I'm sure the, the uh, terrorists out there right now are cooking up stuff for us. Okay, so anyhow, you can't wait too long to act. Uh, try as your risk. What's the risks, you know, of doing this versus the risk of doing that versus the risk of doing that? We do, in, as an EMT, we do triage where we look at, you know, some of these things I'm just going to have to give up on. I, I don't think we're going to manage to save that person, or in your case, I don't think we're going to manage to, you know, stay at this location or keep this job. So I'm going to put that off and move on to another plan. Prioritize your actions. What do I got to do first, second, third, and fourth? Uh, we covered it a little more in the final five principles of survival. Um, evacuate versus shelter is a really good one. I think a lot of people, survivalists, if you will, and I, I think of myself as a self-reliance practitioner and advocate, <laughs> okay? Um, but nevertheless, you could be, I'm, I, I tell people I'm a survivalist and, and I've never had any problems. Actually, they come out of the woodwork. Yeah, you know, mine too. I got a pack. I got, you'd be surprised. I think about 50% of the population, at least, our, our closet survivalists. You know, no reason to be in the closet because it's mainstream now, okay? But anyhow, uh, travel versus waiting for help. If you're lost in the woods, you know, usually it's better to hang in there and stay, but some, in some conditions it's better to try to get out. I cover that in a whole different program. Um, evacuation versus shelter. A lot of people were, they had their whole thing on evacuating. They had their pack, they had their plans, maybe they had their group evacuation plan, all this kind of stuff, but they weren't as well positioned for a long-term semi-isolation thing that we had in the COVID-19. So you've got to be ready for all kinds of options. The last thing you really want to do is take off in your pack and be, you know, out, out there where the disease is, where the crazies are, uh, where the violence is, where the bad weather is, all those things. That's a last resort. You should have that. You should have that survival pack. By the way, I never do survival packs because everybody else does them, but I, I do cover it in my, um, 
in my book form, uh, Skyhorse Publishing. Also, also you can get it from Amazon. Uh, Ultimate Book of Survival Gear. I go over every item of gear, and I then bring it into the packs and the different kind of packs that you would have. I also cover it a lot of times, different elements of it in the American Survivor newsletter and the free uh, website at americansurvivor.org. Uh, but anyhow, you, that's an important, you know, your plan should cover that. Well, with this, 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 we're staying home. If this happens, we got to be ready to go. Uh, and if this happens, we're going to evacuate and I've got a plan. By the way, I'll keep my survival packs all in tote bins, plastic tote bins. They were in the basement, but I had a, we had some flooding years and years ago. I was able to grab those tote bins and bring them upstairs and actually loaded them in the vehicle. It was that close to having to leave the house. But I had them all organized. And my boots were in there. My weapons were in there. Everything I needed was in one tote bin, including my pack. And then my wife had one. And we were ready to go. We didn't have to rummage around the house looking for stuff. Um, you know, even if we just take off right now. Okay. I got my boots, you know, and I, 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 the clothes that I need, and sometimes you update the pack for winter versus su summer conditions. So anyhow, those are the five, uh, pr first five principles of survival. As I said, the, the, the second five is do the right thing, take control, have what you need, use what you have, and, including improvising, and do what is necessary, and we're going to talk about that in a future presentation. So meanwhile, this is Indiana Jim for Life and Freedom. Have a great one and stay safe.